All right, welcome everybody. It's Pup's Office Hours. Today's April 27th. There are, there's turmoil in the markets. I'm sure you've all noticed. Uh, not really fun times, but i um, going to take a look at the general market overview and we'll look at some trade ideas and some charts that I put out over the last uh, few weeks and uh, take a look at where we're headed. Well, so first off, I'm Danny Naz. You might know me online uh, or on Twitter as the Pup of Wall Street. Uh, I've been trading full time for about three years now. I've been in the markets for about eight or nine years. And this is my office hours. I run this every two weeks on Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Generally do it for all of my members as just a way to kind of touch base, um, go over some charts, go over some of the trade ideas, go over the general market conditions, and we'll do some chart requests. We'll do some Q&A and we'll go from there. So uh, let's talk about real quick. So I use TrendSpider, it's my main charting platform. I use uh, black box stocks for options, activity and dark pool data. And then I use TradeyTix for the more algo uh, driven trades. Uh, bear with me one second. Yeah, we'll talk about, uh, if you guys wanna talk about some earnings, we could talk about earnings. Um, certainly, if you have tickers you want to go over, uh, drop them in the chat and uh, we'll go over them once I do the market overview. And uh, so just uh, for those of you who aren't members, I do run a trading room. Uh, it is uh, $79 for, per quarter or $275 for the year. Pretty much everything on the screen, the uh, trading education, long-term conviction. I, I put out a uh, trade idea or a trade email every morning with a market overview, uh, economic data, uh, calendar, any earnings that are coming up, any pertinent news that happened or is going on, upgrades, downgrades, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, generally, we'll put out one or two trade ideas a day. In these market conditions, it's a little far, far and fewer in between just because of what's going on in the market. Um, generally, when the market is coming down, there's always relative strength to the upside, but we're not really seeing too much relative strength. We're seeing a broader market sell-off. So that's why we want to just be a little patient, a little cautious. We don't need to trade every day. We certainly don't need to trade every week. Um, but last but not least, I, I also have the executive plan, which also includes four hours of coaching calls uh, included in the yearly subscription and lifetime access to my Fibonacci course uh, and certainly priority support. So bear with me while I get my uh, charts up here. So one second. Okay. So let me get a thumbs up in the chat. Make sure you're seeing my screen here. Should be a chart of spy. Let me just get RSI up here. Thank you, Raina. All right. So uh, just to give you a quick update on what we're looking at. So for, for the most part, I'll have these labeled, but the dark blue line, that's going to be your 50 simple moving average, your red line, that's going to be your 200 simple moving average. Um, I'll even throw a black line on there. That's your 21 EMA. That's your um, exponential moving average. And uh, these blue lines, these lighter blue lines are going to be your, your anchored view apps. And so let's just dig right into the charts. Uh, right here, we're looking at SPY. I've been charting and posting this for some time now. Right after this death cross, we had a rally through the 50 and the 200. I think this, this was basically you know, an ABC, ABC, right? We, we came right into this level that I said, watch out right here. We gapped over the previous highs here. And then we just continued to sell off and now made another A wave down, B wave up. And I think what we're seeing here is another C wave down. And so this looks like a, a bigger A, B, C correction. Um, this is generally what you see, you know, after, you know, fairly big moves. And you can see if we zoom out, this is a pretty big move that we're seeing here. So um, this ABC correction, you know, so far it's taken four months to unfold. And it could be another month or so before we see uh, the bottom. The one thing I've noticed about this particular sell-off, it's not, it's not an accelerated sell-off like we saw here, where it was just like down day, down day, down day, down day. And they were pretty big sell-offs. I mean, you had two pretty big sell-off days here, but then you had a counter uh, rally here off of the October 22 anchored VWAP, or sorry, the October 2020 anchored VWAP. But then we continued down 
um, what was that, uh, Tuesday, yesterday. And then today we tried to rally, uh, but we just put in a, a nasty spinning top. So, um, you know, I had this 415. For those of you who are members, uh, I've been giving you charts pretty much every morning. Um, you know, I did have this 415 level as potential support because you could see back here on March 8th and March 14th, it acted as support. It acted as support again today, but I don't think the sell-off is over. Now, keep in mind, when the market is coming down, you do get these sometimes violent, fast moves back to the upside. And a lot of the times, it's, it's they're, they're called suckers rallies or, or you know, a counter trend rally. Right now, the trend is down. There's no question the trend is down. And so you can't, you can't get sucked into these counter trend rallies because you know, you'll get beat up, especially if you're, if you're playing options. And so what I would always suggest is, yes, you can take trades when you see these bounces to the upside, but you have to take profits pretty quickly. You have to be really nimble when taking these types of trades. And if this is not your style of trading, then sitting on the sidelines and just observing price action is probably the, the best course of action. So let's just talk a little bit about where we go from here. So 415 needs to hold. I think this needs to hold all week. If we lose and we close under 415 at all during this week, then 410 will come. And under 410, I think 400, you know, between 398 and 400 should come. That might be our bottom. If it's not, we still have this COVID low, and I'll show you what that means. So I have an anchored view app to the COVID low right here. That's telling us where all the buyers and sellers are. So since COVID, if you bought down here, you're still in the green. But it looks like that's where the market wants to come you know, into. So if we go out to like, let's say a weekly chart, I think it puts it a little more in perspective. You know, we had a really big move, nice move off of this, this really steep sell off on COVID. And now the market is starting to correct. Like you see this little correction here, a little correction here, a little correction here, but now we're seeing a bigger correction. And, uh, you know, I have these, these labels here, this 50% uh, down uh, 50 cent. Fibonacci down to 401, a 618 down to 383. And then we have that 200 simple moving average down here around 345. Um, I don't think that comes, but you know, look at RSI, right? RSI is not even close to being oversold on the weekly chart. And if we go into the daily chart, we're starting to come down, but watch when we come down to these levels right here, which was this low right here. Um, that might be the indication where a low or a temporary low, you know, the low of that particular time might come. And then we might see a bigger bounce off of that level. But, you know, this is a market where right now we have to take it one day at a time, one, one chart at a time, you know, one week at a time. So let's take a quick look at the queues. Uh, the queues are very similar. You know, they're actually, in fact, a bit weaker. So if you see here on the queues, going back to the COVID low, we're already there, right? We're pretty much we're not, you know, we're, 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 we didn't test it today, but we're right on top of it, right? Right at 317. Now with the cues, the one thing I, I noted, you know, this looks a little bit more like a, a five wave move down. So wave one, two, wave three, wave four, and now potentially wave five down here. So one, two, three, four, five, um, 300 to 303 would be where around I would target it. You could see you know, again, this is coming down to oversold conditions. But keep in mind, when you get oversold, you can stay oversold for a period of time. Just because you're oversold on RSI or any kind of, you know, oscillator or, or lagging indicator, it doesn't necessarily mean it can't stay down there. And it's certainly not necessarily a, a buy indicator. It's just it's telling you that we're in oversold conditions. Just like when we're in overbought conditions, that doesn't necessarily mean that the top is in. You can continue to make newer highs in overbought conditions if RSI just resets a little bit under overbought. So just keep that in mind. But you know, from what I'm looking at on the cues here, looks like a wave one, two, three, triangle four, wave five. Wave five could be done, or it, it can continue to sell off into this 300 to 303 region. So that's what I'm watching on the queues. And uh, IWM, you know, is also not looking that great. Again, looking like a wave one, two, potential three, triangle four, and a wave five. You know, this might come down even lower. Let's get some extensions here. You know, we might come down 
you know, 172 under 186 is definitely possible because look what happened, you know, when you have, you know, this big run up, you know, you're, you're not really building any kind of support in this vertical line, you know, in this vertical run up. So what I would watch for is that prior, that prior high, that prior resistance right here. So that's 164. So, you know, that's certainly in the cards if the market continues to sell off. And then my anchored view app for the COVID low seems to be off, but let's pop that right on. And you could see we're pretty much losing that today or we lost it today. So uh, smaller caps definitely look weaker relative to Qs and the Qs look relatively weaker according you know, uh, to the SPY and SPY relatively weaker than the Dow, you know, your, your, your top 30 names, you know, that the Dow names have been pretty decent because those are more your consumer staple, you know, the, the companies that are not going anywhere that you need to use those, you know, those services or those products on a daily basis. Uh, and we're definitely seeing a rotation from, um, you know, from, from staples, uh, you know, for out of, excuse me, out of, um, or excuse me, into, into consumer staples um, and, and out of uh, value and out of, um, you know, the, the tech and growth-based names. So um, the other thing too, that's a little concerning is that uh, the VIX the volatility index has still remained elevated. Um, ignore the, um, the moving averages, they, they're not really relevant. Um, but, you know, you could see there is a squeeze setting up here, looking like it wants to push higher. And so watch for these kind of volatility spikes. You could see all these highlights here are volatility spikes um, ever since COVID. You know, that was the COVID high back up here. Volatility has dropped as, as COVID has weaned. Um, but now we're starting to see, you know, these spikes again, partially due to uh, the war in Ukraine, also due to inflation, you know, rising interest rates, uh, rising costs, um, you know, higher inflation. So all of these will factor into a, a higher VIX. And so with, with a higher VIX, you're going to see a lot more volatility. And that's basically what we've seen for the last, you know, couple of months. Um, so for, for the next, you know, probably 10, maybe 15 minutes, I'm going to go through uh, some of the trade ideas that I've put out, you know, over the last four to six weeks that actually are still green. And uh, when I put this up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw on the ATR trailing stop. So before I go through this, I just want to talk a little bit about the ATR trailing stop. So the ATR, I'm actually, I'll make it a little thicker. So it's a little more evident. There you go. So ATR, what does it stand for? Average true range. ATR, your, you know, your average true range for your stock is, is like 1.0. So when you do an ATR of, let's say, a 2.0 or a 3, 2.5 or a 3.0, it's 2x or 3x the average true range of that particular stock. And, you know, I found it to be a very good way to keep me in a trade on the equity side if you're taking, you know, uh, shares. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about Arch, right? So we took this initial trade at 103.62. So it was basically on this breakout right here. You can see we got the breakout. We got the retest on the breakout right here. Actually, let me grab my little tool here. Okay. So you can see you got the breakout here and you got the retest here. And it just started to move higher. Now, this, this dark blue line, that's going to be your ATR. And you'll notice as the trade progresses, the price doesn't really violate ATR. And the way I use ATR is basically as a stop loss, but as a stop loss, only if the candle closes underneath ATR. And so you could see in this respect, you know, it, it tested it here, but it held. It held it in this consolidating triangle. It held over ATR. No reason to be out of the trade here. Continue to move higher. And now on, I think this was what? This was last week. We had that initial sell-off day. This day right here is where you stop out of the trade, right? Um, and in, in fact, we have earnings coming up right after that. And so in any event, you're probably going to want to tighten up your stop losses and or take 
you know, profit into earnings because earnings is always a gamble. And, you know, in this case, earnings actually pushed us, you know, right back higher. And so if I scan this out, right, you know, you see earnings came uh, right here and then we came right back up to the highs. So, you know, regardless, this was still a really good trade, right? From the entry here, all the way to, bear with me one second. From the entry here, all the way to where we broke down, this is a 50% trade over two months and two weeks. You know, in this market environment, that's a really good trade. But, you know, the one thing we've noticed is, resources, uh, mining companies, metal companies, oil and gas. That's what's been moving ever since this war triggered in Ukraine. Um, commodity prices, um, you know, these, these names have been moving and that's where my focus has been for the last couple of months. But last week, you know, we saw a, a broader sell-off, you know, a, a, a market sell-off in the broader market and everything was getting hit. Tech was getting hit, value was getting hit. Consumer staples were getting hit. Oil and gas was getting hit. And so you have to expect if you're going to make a 50% move in you know, two weeks or two months and two weeks, yeah, you're going to have to expect at some point this is going to start to sell off and profits are, you know, are going to be taken. You know, we could also look at, at volume, right? You know, we saw some higher, higher above average selling volume on these days. That's a signal that, you know, the, 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 the bigger fish and the whales, they're taking their profits. And we need, to, we need to observe this type of price action and also take profits with them. Um, so this is just one example, right? And again, you know, when you're taking a trade, because um, I know I've had a couple of people ask me, you know, can you walk me through how to take these trades? It's very simple. So on February 2nd, I put this trade idea out by the break of 103.62. The, the thing with this is you have to make sure on the breakout, it also closes over that trigger. Because look what happened right here, right? This was back in mid-January. We get the break of that level, right? But it closes underneath. That's not, you know, that's not a trade to take. Because look what happens next. You know, you get a, you get a pullback, right? To that 50 simple moving average. And then it comes back up and it tests it again. And it fails. And then the next day it tests it again. And it breaks out, right? And then the next three days, it basically hovers right on top. And then this next day right here, we've green. And then the next day after that, now we're off to the races. So it's basically the breakout, the retest, and the bounce. There's three ways you could take this trade. You could take the breakout, you could take the retest, or you watch for the pattern to form after the retest, and you could take the break of the retest pattern, right? In this case, it's a triangle or a wedge. You could take the, the breakout right there. So there's a lot of different ways you can take these trades. It's just a matter of, you know, what is what are you comfortable with? I could show you multiple ways to take trades and to manage trades, but everybody's trading psychology is different. And so you have to determine for yourself what is the best way that you can manage a trade. And, and that's what I'm here to help you do. So in any event, um, for ATR, generally, this is how I use ATR. Uh, when you have a stock that's pretty volatile, let's call it a Tesla, that, you know, it has big intraday moves, you have to use ATR 3.0. When you have a stock like an Apple or a Microsoft that has lower volatility, you can use a 2.0 or a 2.5. But more often than not, I'm in the 2.5 to 3.0 range. I prefer to use 3.0. It gives me a wider berth and it helps keep me in trades longer. If I were to change this to 2.5, I'll do that right now. You could see, you know, right here, you get stopped out. And so it's a little bit of an early signal, but I would have missed maybe another seven to 10% of that move. That's why I generally like to keep a 3.0, um, especially in this kind of market where it's, it's really choppy. You know, it's, it's really volatile. You have to give these trades room to breathe. The other thing I'll note, you know, just on this particular trade, and again, for my members, you may know this, and for the people who are new uh, to my, my work and my style of trading, you might not know this, so it's, it's valid to go over. Look at the squeeze setting up right here. Look at the squeeze setting up right here, right? Look at the squeeze setting up right here. You get this squeeze setting up, you get the move higher. You get this squeeze setting up, you get this move higher. 
you get this slingshot squeeze setting up, you get this move higher. And so I'm always, I'm never taking a trade just based on the squeeze. I have to, I have to say that right off the bat. But what I do look at is what is setting up, right? So here, look, you have a cup and handle with a flat top. You have RSI over 50, you got a squeeze setting up. I would take the breakout all day, every day. And that's exactly what we were able to do here. It's not always that clean, but the cleaner it is, the more probability and the higher edge you have in taking the trade. And I think that's really important to note. So I don't want to stay too long on this particular trade because I do want to go some over some other ones. Uh, let's take a look at AMR. This is also another uh, resources company. Now, I didn't put a trade idea out on this one because I felt like it did the same thing that Arch does. And I try not to do that. I try not to, to put out too many ideas in the same sector because then it becomes like feast or famine. If all the trade ideas I put out are airliners and, you know, airliners wind up, you know, taking, you know, taking a dump, they, you know, the, 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 the price tanks, all of them will tank. So I, I rather look, you know, more broadly and get a lot more diversity in the, in the trade ideas that I'm putting out so that this way we're not all, you know, in the same exact, uh, you know, name in the same exact trade, but it's very similar, right? Cup and handle breakout triangle, flat top, another breakout. It sold off, came back, back tested the 50 simple moving average, moved up. Caught some hidden bull and hidden bullish divergence here, right? And that's when RSI is making a lower low and price is making a higher low. It's doing something different. We also had a two dot squeeze setting up right here that fired off right there. And so I'm always looking for these. Look at look at the volume shelf that that formed right here, right? This is volume by price, not volume by time. Uh, you had a beautiful breakthrough on that, and now we're coming back up to those previous highs. But again, you know, with ATR, you're probably out of the trade right here. And that's okay because over this breakout here to here, still pretty good trade, right? It's still a 56% move in a month and a week. So, you know, for, for the people out there that are saying, you know, this is, this is a tough market to trade, they're absolutely right. But tough doesn't mean impossible. These trades are out there. Uh, you just have to know how to, how to look for them and, and how to trade them. It's going to turn volume off. It's a little getting a little busy. All right, CEIX. Uh, I don't think I put a trade idea out on this, but this is another energy company. You know, look at the previous high, thirty six uh, fourteen. Right, broke out, back test, bounced, came back to the fifty, bounced, moving higher. Right, put a stop loss here at thirty four twenty two. Here's some uh, bullish, uh, hidden bullish divergence again. Right. Uh, RSI making a lower high, lower low, price making a higher low. Look at the move to get off of that, right? Really nice. Somebody mentioned STNG. Uh, can you review INSW? Yeah, I'll look at that one later, Isaac. Sure. Uh, so this one, yeah, I had an entry over 1946. Here's 1946. Look at that first test right here. It failed. What does it do when it fails? It comes back down. It tested that 50 simple moving average. It came back up. It broke out. It retested. It came up to my first target, 786. It held it, it broke out, it came back, it back tested ATR right here, right? We're still in the trade and now we're pushing higher into earnings. Now, you know, it's not a big move from the entry, right? We're at, oh, well, actually it's about 22%. So that's actually not that bad. What I would do, so I also get this question a lot. What do you do when you're holding a stock into earnings? What, do, what, what should I do? What should I do, right? And I, I think there's a couple of things we can do. Number one, if you have less than 10% in profits, I would probably close the trade out. If you have more than the expected move, you're okay, I think, to hold the trade. Because basically, if the expected move is $5 and you've got $10 in profit, then the chances of it going down $10, uh, $5 you know, would, as being the, 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 the biggest sell-off is probably pretty good. The probability is pretty good unless something, you know, unexpected happens. And so you have a $5 cushion in that case. That's how you can hold through earnings. If you don't have profit going into earnings, you need to close that trade. If it goes without you, so be it. There's always going to be another trade, but you never want to gamble on earnings, whether it be with options or equity. It's just not worth it. There's too many good trades out there. You don't have to gamble in this type of market. But look at the downtrend breakout here. That was really the first way you could have taken this trade. 
and you could be in it from here. I did not see the breakout here. I caught it when it was coming back up uh, to the 618 at 1946. And we're in this trade from here. And now we've got earnings come up with 22% profit. So that would be something I would hold into. You also got 50 RSI holding here and here. And you got a squeeze setting up here. Look at the squeeze again. A lot of these charts, you're going to notice that um, I'm basically looking at the squeeze firing. Look at the squeeze. Look at that fire, right? I might want to wait to see what happens with earnings. Um, but we have these, these all-time, not the all-time, but 52-week highs here at 24.67. So I'm going to keep a close eye after earnings. Do we gap over earnings? If we gap over earnings, you got to be careful. I would not chase here. What I would watch for is a back test of those earnings, uh, or excuse me, a back test of that 2467 breakout and or a gap fill if we gap up, right? And then you could take the trade from there. So there's always going to be different strategies based on whatever the stock is and, and, and what's going on in the broader market. Um, so let's take a look at AA. This is Alcoa. Original entry was 6258. You can see we hit our first target. We hit our second target. We hit our third target. Right. By the time we had our second target, uh, it did come back. It, it violated uh, ATR right here. You need to be out of the trade here. You do miss a little bit more to the upside, but I think, again, that's okay. I think this was, what, another 30% winner, 48% uh, if you sold into the third target. And if you held from here, still a 24% winner, so still not bad. But you know, now we're coming back down to the bottom of this channel that's formed. And it's starting to bounce. So there might be another opportunity for Alcoa, which is an aluminum company. You know, all these commodity companies are, you know, their prices are going higher. This is just a function of earnings. It had a sell off into earnings. And so this is something I would certainly keep my eye on. And the squeeze does work both ways. Look at this three dot squeeze into earnings. It fired to the downside. You get your downside squeeze firing, uh, price moves down. Uh, here's uh, AR. This has been one of my favorite trades of the year. This is Antero Resources. Two entries on this one. Uh, let's see. We've got the 2170, which was this right here, right? So we had uh, resistance here, resistance here. We get the breakout here. That's our first entry. My first target is going to be 2618. We hit target one. We hit target two. Good to go. It pulls back, comes back up. That, that caused me to put a second entry in. Breaks out, retests, it's off to the races. One target, two targets, three targets, and it's starting to reverse right back into ATR. But throughout this whole move, we have not closed under ATR. So we can hold this entire trade for the entire length of that move. And what was that move? At the top, 72% where we are now, still 51%. So good trade. I will take these types of trades all day, every day. And again, don't let people tell you that you can't trade in this market. It's just, you have to be really selective. You have to know where the relative strength in the market is. Uh, here's um, ADM, uh, Archer Daniels Midland. Their um, processor of oil seed, coin, uh, corn, wheat. This is really a lot of this is moving these this sector because of what's happening in Ukraine. I think Ukraine and Russia do supply a lot of um, wheat and agricultural uh, products. And so with that going on, it caused disruption in this industry. And you know this is again why it was on the radar. So we take the first entry over 7805. I missed this move right here because it just wasn't on my radar. But we did catch the move from here. We hit our first target, we hit our second target, we hit our third target, and then finally we break down here. And again, this was another, you know, pretty good trade uh, from here to here. 20%, the top, you got about 29%, so not bad. Um, CF, entry was at $74, that was right down here, right? Think on 211. So back here, this one broke out. It came back, back tested that 50 simple moving average, came back out. So, you know, when you get a breakout, this is a good, this is a great example. When you get a breakout and it fails immediately. So we got the breakout, it failed the next day, stop out immediately. 
take a small loss. It's okay. We go and we take it the next time it breaks out. You know what? Closes again. We stop out. We take another small loss. Then we get the breakout the next time. And this time it goes. So you take a small loss, you take a small loss, but you get a really big win. And this really big win, it covers this loss. It covers this loss. You know, this is one of the biggest problems that traders have is they're afraid to take small losses. You cannot be afraid to take small losses. Small losses, yes, they do add up, but you know, you have to have the discipline to take the small loss so you can get the big win. If you take the small loss and you take the small loss and you give up, you miss out on the big win, right? But you got to be disciplined in your strategy and you have to be disciplined in your risk management. Take the small losses. It's part of the, it's part of the process. It's part of the game, but it allows you to get the big wins. All right. AbV was another really big winner this year. It's finally starting to really pull back another cup and handle breakout in at 138. This went up to 169. So that was around 45%. You know, by the time it, it broke down from ATR, it was at 36%. So that's why, you know, again, I, you know, I could show you all of these trades with ATR. They work really well. You know, FMC, we just got into this. This was 3.3 over 119. This was back here. Uh, it's starting to pull back. Has not closed underneath ATR. Costco, break over 550, breakout, retest hits two targets, finally reverses at that second test of the target. Now we're pulling back. You know, we're back at that 50 simple moving average. We're right back at our entry. So this is also where you need to have discipline. You know, if your plan, and this is where really having a plan uh, into each trade makes, you know, the most sense. If your plan is to take, you know, let's say uh, 50 shares of Costco here, sell 25 at the first target, sell 25 at the second target, or sell 25 at the first target and 10 at the second target and move your stops up. You know, that's another thing. You have to move your stop losses up as you go. You, you know, uh, Arnold ATR is going to be 3.0. So, you know, here's what I do with stop losses. So let's say we take the trade on Costco, right? Entries at 550. We, we move up, uh, let's say we move up 5%. I'm putting my stop loss at break even. That's gonna, that's gonna solidify this trade for me because now I can't lose short of this gapping under that stop um, you know, the, uh, the next day. But after I'm up like seven to 8%, my stop loss goes into break even. In this market, when I'm up five, 6%, my stop loss goes to break even. When I'm up, you know, 10%, my stop loss will go to like three to 5%. When I'm up 20%, my stop loss will go 10 to 12%. And then at that point, what I may do, if you don't want to manage your trades every day, then just put a trailing stop. You know, whatever platform you use, most of them do offer trailing stops. You know, put like a, a five to 7% trailing stop on it and just forget about it. You know, let the trade work for you. You don't have to manage it every day. When you're up 30, 40, 50% on a trade, throw a trailing stop on there and just forget about it. You don't have to manage it. Um, I think that's the, the path of least resistance. Um, so Dan, you're asking, do I study earnings history or fundamentals before holding into earnings? No, not really. I'm a trader. Um, this, um, this is not investing. If I were investing in a stock, yeah, I absolutely would do my due diligence. Um, what I may do, even as a trader, I may look back at the last few earnings and see, you know, what, what did the stock do? But that may not have any relevance to what the stock is going to do. You know, past performance doesn't indicate, you know, future performance. So um, it, it can give you an idea, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what's going to happen. Uh, but as a trader, what I'm really focused in on is, do I have enough profit to hold through earnings? And if I don't, just have the discipline to close the trade out, get your minimal profit, whatever it is, and say, have a nice day. And two things are going to happen, or three things, really. The first thing is it gaps up and it goes. So what, right? There's a plan to get back into that trade. We'll talk about that in a minute. The other thing that could happen is it just does nothing. It's flat. Great. Now you could buy it back. 
at the same price that you sold it, even though you mitigated your risk. The other thing that can happen is it gaps down and, and, it, and it pulls back to a, a, a key support or a moving average that you like. Guess what? That's called the earnings discount. Now you can buy back at a cheaper price. Now, if you get a gap up on earnings, I like to do what's called a peg play. That's a power earnings gap up. Um, I don't see any, let me see if I can see one here. Um, I don't really see one, but let's just say this was, uh, let's just say this gap up right here was earnings. This was earnings right here, really. But let's say this was gap up, this gap up right here was earnings. What I do is I right click on it on TrendSpider. I put an anchored VWAP right there. And this is the power earnings gap up. So look what happens. It gaps up and it holds this level, right? I don't want to buy it here yet. I'm now seeing that a wedge is forming. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a top, a top line trend line there. I'm going to put a bottom trend line right there, right? Because this, this is the wedge. Now it breaks the wedge to the, bound, to the downside, but catches this 21 EMA and pushes back up. Well, guess what? You get the breakout right here. So you're over the trend line and you're over that power earnings gap up anchored VWAP. I take the trade here and look what happens afterwards, right? So that, that would be what I would do if I were to sell into earnings and the trade goes without me. Doesn't mean, it certainly doesn't mean I'm gonna chase it, I'm not. But if I wanna get back into it, let's say it's just a name I like, earnings were spectacular, it looked great, I want, I want a piece of it. I would just do that power earnings gap up um, style of, of re-entry on that trade. And then you can use that, that anchored VWAP that I showed you as a stop loss. If you get a daily close underneath that, then get out of the trade. All right. So next up is NEW, another one, 128, got the breakout here, the back test, it did fail. We could stop out. Get my, um, you can get back in here. Look, you get another breakout, another retest, and now we're off to the races. So um, this one, NEU, uh, sorry, NUE, uh, still a pretty good trade. Uh, here's PANW, P-A-N-W. Been watching cybersecurity uh, for a little bit. We got two entries off of this, one on uh, 222 back here. And second entry over 572 right here. And uh, we hit two targets on that second entry. And you can see all these wicks through that uh, 631 target. When you see a lot of this, you got to start tightening up your stop losses. In this case, you know, I wouldn't use ATR. I would use maybe that 21 EMA. You could see right here, you, you deviate and you get below that. I'm out of the trade right here. Now it looks like a bear flag forming. So there, there are reasons why you use ATR, but then there's other reasons why you, you want to not, you know, just use ATR blindly as your stop loss, especially if you're coming into these levels. I mean, you've got uh, almost a month of price action telling you 631 is a hard level, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 days, it got rejected off of 631. And so, you know, by that, I would say by the third or fourth rejection, that's where you start tightening the, the stop. Use that 21 trailing EMA as your stop loss. CrowdStrike, uh, I think we had two entries on this as well. Uh, 193 and 206, 193 got that breakout, hit two targets, actually hit three targets. Um, and then 206 was the second tar second entry was right here. So this was like two entries back to back. It just looked really strong, gave us those three targets. And, and now we were pulling back pretty hard. So um, it was a good trade, but now you can see squeeze setting up, firing to the downside. It looks like it's coming back down. Um, really, really tough environment for tech right now. Um, you know, if you're if you are trading tech stocks, you have to have tighter stops and take profit quicker. Uh, here's Zip. First entry was over 201. This one hit the 200 simple moving average, I believe. I put out a note on this. Just be careful. Anytime you're taking a trade. And generally, I don't put a lot of trades out where they're under the 200. It's just right now, a lot of stocks are under the 200. So I still want to put out, you know, relatively good trade ideas. So with this one, you're breaking a downtrend. You're breaking prior high. You have a slingshot squeeze setting up. You're breaking 50 on RSI. You know, it looked really good across the board. The problem is you got that 200 simple moving average above. And that's what I had noted. Watch the 200. 
If you go into it and you get rejected, you got to start tightening your stops up. That's exactly what happened right here. You got that rejection off the 200 and now it's coming back down. Uh, here's Walmart. It's one of those consumer staples that I was talking about. Took that entry over one, uh, 152, came up, hit our first target, got rejected, hit our first target again, four days in a row, finally broke above it, but failed again at it. And now we're coming back to that 21 moving average. So still looks pretty good. Uh, it may need to rest here for a little bit. It's just, you know, it's what the market is doing right now. Here's Raytheon. Um, this one is kind of all over the place. Um, this was just more of what was going on in Eastern uh, Europe, the war. Um, it was a nice trade until it wasn't. And then it was a nice trade again until it wasn't. Um, it, it's just, this one was all over the place. So, and then uh, Johnson & Johnson, this one is pretty decent so far. This was recent. Actually, no, that was on 3.8. I actually I put the trade idea out on 3.8. Um, it triggered on 314, bounced back and forth, and finally triggered again on 324. And then we have this rising wedge, this actually rising broadening formation. And uh, it looks like we may have to come back and back test 179. So um, Johnson Johnson is not going to be a fast mover. So that's another thing. Understand the personality of the stocks that you're trading. And uh, last but not least, this is probably my most accurate trade of the year so far. This was Dollar Tree. And let's see, where was that entry? 144. So the entry was over here. What I noticed is we were at, we had a very clean, uh, let me let Abu in. We had a very clean wave one, two, three. That's what caught my eye. Then we have this kind of, you know, this triangle forming here. And I wanted to catch wave five. That's exactly what I wanted. And so we got the break of 144. I had my target zone right here. And where are we reversing from? Pretty much dead on, hit that 174.66 target. And now we're, we're pulling back to the 21 moving average. But look at how the 21 acted as support there, acted as support here. Let's see if this 164 level can hold. If 164 can hold, we can potentially come back up and test 174 again. And if we could test it again, the likelihood is we've already tested it twice. We could test it at that third time. We might be able to trigger and get an extended wave five up to 190. Um, it looks pretty good. It looks like this might be a wave four right here, right? Potential wave one, two, three, right? And then potential wave four here, maybe some sort of A, B, C correction, and then wave five potentially ending here. I generally will put wave five ends somewhere between the 1618 and the 200% extension, that's off of this swing high and that swing low. But sometimes you get an extended wave five. And because we had such a short wave one, as long as this one is wave, wave five is longer than wave one, we're good to go. It doesn't have to be uh, shorter than wave three. Because the general rule is wave three is generally your longest, but it can never be your shortest. And we already have a, a short wave one. So wave five can extend as much as it wants. Um, so that's why I always put between the 1618 and the 200% extension. But if we do break higher, I think the 2618 is in play at 190. So that is pretty much, these are the trades that are still green. There were probably another 15 or so trades that were pretty green. For those of you who've been with me for a while, we were, we were, we were hitting pretty hard. And the, the, the market last week just wiped out a lot of the gains on those trades. And that's why you have to use stop losses and you have to practice your, your you know, proper account management and risk management. Um, all right, so let me go into the chart request. Uh, let's see, D-L-O. Uh, well, Ron, you wanted to look at Google. So let's take a look at Google. So Google looks like it's gapping down on earnings. Let me take ATR off. Let's clean this up a little bit. We don't need the 21. So this is not looking great. So you could see on this run up, a lot of wedges, right? Wedge, wedge, wedge. And now we're finally getting this like massive broadening formation. If we extend the broadening formation out, looks like we're losing it here on earnings. Um, I'm going to go up to a weekly chart just so it's a little cleaner. 
And let's do some fib work. So we came right down, uh, well, let me do this. Put that on the lower time frames. Let's go back down to the daily. So yeah, so you, we're gapping right on top of this 382. So this, you know, is a natural place for a long run to stop. It generally is not where it stops though. Not when you have such a big, big move. So it's very possible. So look, you, you've, got, you've got a high and a lower high and another lower high. And so you're breaking down from that triangle. Um, it doesn't look great, but we are coming to oversold conditions. I usually, deploy the, the three day rule after earnings. I, I generally won't buy after three days uh, until three days, because you're going to get a lot of volatility. Um, listen, Google is one of those companies that it could rebound and come back up pretty quickly, but you got to think about the broader market right now. It's, it's not going to buck the trend. The trend right now is tech is selling off. And so you just got to be careful, you know, trying to time bottoms because dips can get dippier and dippier and dippier and dippier, you know, um, especially when you have a stock that's run up, you know, so, so far, so high and fast. All right, uh, let's take a look at DLO. Okay, D local limited. Looks like I had this charted at one point. Interesting. Two, three, four. Yes, looks like a five wave move down. So wave one, two, three, four. Possible wave five down. And let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I, I would expect probably a little more downside on this. Um, you know, we're, we're near these lows right here. So if you do break below $21, then watch for possibly $18.50. And under $18.50, probably around $13.72, you've got room to the downside on RSI. It's, it's lost this kind of one-two channel. We tried to back test it and break out. It couldn't, and so it got rejected. Um, yeah, it's under a declining 50, under a declining 200. Yeah, I would, I would just be careful. If you get a bounce off of these lows, like in this yellow box, you can take a trade here. Just make sure you keep your stop at around 22, I would say 21, 21.50, somewhere around there. But um, it doesn't look great. You're, you're, you've got a lot of overhead resistance. You know, put the 21 moving average. You know, you got all your key moving averages up ahead. You got all this supply up ahead. And so even if you get, you know, a bounce trade, let's say off of this level, you're going to hit this supply right here. Everybody that's bought from over here, they're down, they're in the red. And so when they come back and they finally get break even, they're going to sell into you and it's going to cause this to continue to go down until it either consolidates and absorbs, you know, the sellers or it just, you know, blasts through and then you would target, you know, up here. But yeah, it doesn't look it doesn't look great from a from a structural standpoint. I N S W. Let's take a look. And guys, guys, and gals, if you have any um, chart requests, feel feel free to drop them in the chat now. Um, let me go first up to I've never touched this chart before, so I generally like to start at the weekly chart. Let's turn earnings off. All right, so first thing I would look at, let's see if we got any trend lines. So we've got a little bit of a trend breakout on a wedge, All right? So that's a nice breakout. You're over your 200 and your 50, simple moving averages. We are a little extended over our 21. And the reason why I would say that is because you get the breakout, right? But where's the retest? There's no retest yet. So, um, you got a nice squeeze 
setting up right here that fired. So you got the squeeze setting up right there, fired, fired. So that looks great. Uh, squeeze momentum still has some room. So this can continue to go higher. Nice uh, bullish engulfing candle here. So a bullish engulfing candle is a candle that is hot. It, it closes over the high of the previous candle and the low was all lower than the low of the previous candle. And so you get an engulfing candle and we're closing at the top. So that's that's a bullish engulfing. So that looks pretty good. I would also say, you know, looking at these prior highs here, I think that would have offered some resistance. We're there already. So that looks pretty good. You got that high to contend with, 2239. We're coming right up to that. We might get a rejection off that level. Maybe that gives us the back test. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty decent. I mean, just from a structural standpoint, we could do, we could take a look at some retracement levels. We're put through the 50%. I would watch the 618, right? Let me anchor volume to the prior high. All right, so you got very little volume up here, which is good. Meaning if you can get over this 2239 level, it has very little friction to go back up to these previous highs. So um, looks good. Now, here's the concern. If you get a rejection off of the 618, Look, what, look what's forming here, All right? Let's say you come up to the 618. It's always a hard level to break. Let's say you get a rejection off that. Now you've got left shoulder, head, right shoulder, right? So you might get a head and shoulders formation there. So you just have to be careful and you have to you know, watch for those pattern setups and just watch those levels that I mentioned. All right, let's see what else we got here. All right, so Arnold's asking, what's the first thing you look when you create a thesis if a stock is bullish or bearish? Great question. First thing, is it over its key moving average, uh, key moving averages? So that would be over the 50 simple moving average, over the 200 simple moving average. In a normal trending market, I'm not taking any trades under those moving averages. I'm more of trading above the 21. So I'm looking at trending stocks that are moving higher, that are pulling back to their 21. That's the first thing I look at. The second thing I want to look at is just a series of indicators. Um, RSI, squeeze, anchored VWAP, Fibonacci, Elliott wave. I'm doing all that work. I'm putting the work in on the chart to see, you know, where, where am I at relative to, you know, those those indicators. I'm not an indicator first type of trader. I'm a, you know, observe the chart, look at where my support and resistance levels are. If it looks good and it's above my key moving averages, I'll put the time in. And generally my process is very much like this. I have a watch list that I've scanned off of. Let's say I get down to 50 names and I'm going like this. I'm just going like this. I'm just looking, I'm looking, oh, that looks pretty good. And then I'll stop for a minute and I'll, and I'll add it to my final watch list. And then I'll just keep going, you know, wait for that to, to pop up. And I keep going. I'm just visually looking at these charts to see what catches my eye, you know? And, and if I see something that looks really interesting, then I'm going to add it to my watch list, my, you know, my final watch list. You know, this is what I do every weekend. And then I spend the time on it, you know? So if I look at, if I'm looking at this chart right here on Nucor, right? And I'm like, huh, look at this. So this looks like, a wave one, two, wave three, four, and potential wave five here. Now, you know, would I be taking a trade up here? Absolutely not. Could it continue to go higher? Sure. Right. So I would look at, all right, well, look, we got a flat top there. Um, this looks like an A, B, C retracement. This makes a lot of sense. Where would, be, where would be my wave five target? I'll run an extension off of wave four. Generally, it's between the 1618 and the 200% extension. Where did we see resistance? Right in that zone. So I would observe this, right? But I would not be taking this trade. It just looks like it's already gone, right? It's gone. Had I seen this back here, and we're already in this trade, but had I seen this back here and not seen it, then I would say, ooh, there's an opportunity right here, you know, for, you know, what, a 10% move, 
12, sorry, 40% move, my bad. I forgot we're on the weekly chart. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's definitely opportunities, but that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for these types of setups. I'm looking for triangles. I'm looking for gap ups. Why do I like earnings? Because you, earnings generally will give you gap ups. And what is a gap up? A gap up generally, we could look at Tesla as a great example. Gap ups tell you where wave threes are. So I have to come down to the daily chart, but you know, you got a gap up here, you got a gap up here, you got a gap up here. Here's your wave three. You got a gap up right here. Here's another wave three, right? I thought we caught a gap up right here. I had this as a one, two, three. I thought we caught a gap up right here, but now it just started to flush and it violated the high of wave one. So this is not the right count, something else going on here. So I need to go back and do more due diligence on this chart and figure out what's going on. But it's not what I thought it was. But generally speaking, these gap ups tell you wave three activity is happening right here. Look, at this is a beautiful one, right? Here's your wave one. Here's your ABC pullback two. Here's a big wave three. You got your four here and you got a truncated wave five. That's, I think, what's going on. Sometimes you get a wave five that, that stops right below wave three. It's called a truncated wave. And it's looking more likely that that's what's happening here on Tesla because you've got You've got your high here, you've got a lower high here and a lower high here. So it's it's showing weakness and now it's starting to sell off. So it's looking likely that this is wave three, this might be wave five. And this could be A, B, hello, wave C, right? We're probably gonna come down to that region if this is what I think it is. So yeah. All right, so that's, that's basically what I'm looking at on a chart. And especially when it comes to Elliott wave, you always have to have you have to have it a couple of different ways because as new data comes in, you know, your, your thesis has to change. You know, you can't just say, I see what I see and then that's what it is. All right, so ATR settings, I mentioned that 2.0, sorry, 2.5 to 3.0. What do I think about Facebook? Oof. Interesting, had a nice move. Uh, let's see. So let's put after hours on. Oh, wow, 207, very interesting. All right, I, when I watched it last, it was at like 198. So it's moved even higher. I would watch this tomorrow. Um, it's got a shot. It's got a shot up to 218. 210 to 218. I would say 2 210 to 218 is probably possible. It's going to be a little extended when it opens tomorrow. So you have to keep that in mind. You might get a push. I wouldn't chase. Wait for a pullback. But it looks, it looks, um, it looks decent, but it's bucking the trend. It's, you know. Yeah, I had an initial entry at 223. And I think we had it. It hit that first target and just reversed. It was unfortunate, but it does happen. All right. Um, trades for tomorrow, really tough, really tough. It's so hard to say. Every day is different. Money's rotating into, into different sectors every day for the last week, you know, oil and gas goes, then it pulls back, market dumps, tech comes back, then it dumps. I, I think we just have to be really patient right now. Don't force trades. Don't, don't get into a trade just, you know, for shits and giggles, just to, you know, scratch an edge and, and get into a trade. This is not that type of environment right now. We, we need to let the market do what it does, wait for it to settle. There's going to be plenty of opportunities to take trades, I think in May. I think this week is going to be a wash. I think there's a lot of, you know, the VIX is elevated. There's going to be a lot of volatility. I think we just need to remain patient right now. All right, so Alfonso, I went over Tesla. Let's take a quick look at SE. SE is just virtually destroyed. Again, look at this. I mean, it's a pretty clear wave count, right? Here's your wave one, two. Here's your wave three, very extended wave three. Here's your ABC and four. Here's your wave five. That's it. Party's over. Got to wait for a retracement. Um, so 
we're getting a big retracement here. So we're at the 786 from that swing right there. It's a pretty deep retracement. It still can go further. Um, you know, this can come down to 50, $53. It's already lost the, uh, the 786 right here. So it doesn't look great. Um, yeah. Seeing flushes, right? Big move down, counter trend rally, not really that great. Push down, tries to rally again, not great. Pushes down, tries to rally again, not great. Pushes down. So yeah, it's just not looking great for SE, unfortunately. Uh, CPHC. All right, let's take a look at this. So Canterbury Park Holdings Corp. I have no idea who they are, what they do. It looks like there's not a lot of volume here. Go up to a weekly chart. Yeah, it's really tough when you have these names that don't provide a lot of liquidity. I can give you some primary targets here. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so those are your targets up above. I mean, you pretty came pretty close to the 1618 here, came back, hovered around that 172, came up to 25, 168, blasted through. Don't know if there was earnings or something. No. Yeah, I mean, this looks like it just is moving on news or something. So, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of what you have here. You know, flat top at 1769, compressing hard against it here, ascending triangle right there. You know, you do the measured move on the ascending triangle. And that's probably your measured move right there. And we're right at the measured move. So it could continue to go. Um, really hard to say. I don't know too much about the company. So it's hard to say what it may or may not do. But it looks like if you're not in already, I would not be chasing up here. VLO, Valero, I know this one, uh, right? Let's take a look at that. So look, you got your beautiful breakout right here, right? Breakout retest, beautiful, right there. First target is gonna be right about here, 102. We hovering around that 102 level. Next target's gonna be up here. We could also do some FIB work, get some FIB retracements right there. You could see we're right at that 786. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's a trade here back to the highs of 126.98. And let's see how supply is. Yeah, so look, you see how price accelerated once it got above this uh, su uh, supply zone, right? So it just accelerated because there's very little supply up here. And so you're going to come into maybe 115 to 118, there's a little bit of supply. But this shouldn't have too much of a problem getting back and testing these previous highs. So that looks pretty decent. Yeah, Raina, so many broken charts. So many. Needs time. Just market just needs time. Woof. Let's go down to the daily chart. Yeah. Broken. Some indicators here and put our moving averages. So we're holding right on top. We back tested, we broke out of the 200, back tested it. Doesn't look bad. Um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's not, it's not the greatest, right? We're still like making a series of lower highs here, right? Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Ideally, I want to see this over $26. I think there. You know, you're out of your IPO base and, you know, potential to move higher, but it still looks fairly weak. Uh, let's look at Nike. Let me go through these a little quicker. Nike's broken, right? Came all the way down. Almost looks like a W here, W bottom breakdown. Yeah, doesn't look great. I think that one's done for a little while. HD, I was watching that one last week. Uh, it's still in this falling wedge. I still like it. it. I like it over 317. Squeeze is setting up. RSI is setting up, compressing under 50. 
it looks good. Wait for 317. That's the trade plan. I put that out, what, last week. So looks pretty decent. Uh, let's do Neo. Another one that just doesn't look great, you know. Here's another trick, right? You see the acceleration here. So this is your first trend line, right? The sell-off is accelerating. There's your second trend line. It's a little more, it's a little steeper. Here's your third trend line. It's a little steeper. So the sell-off is increasing. So it's never a good sign. So that's Neo. GDX. Yeah, this one, uh, gold is a weird one. It had a really nice breakout um, and it just, it's coming back. It's, we're getting a throwback retest, I think on the 200 and this trend line. Gold is tricky. This is the gold, this is the uh, Vanek Gold miners. So I had an initial entry over 39. We got the breakout, came right to our first target and just quickly reversed and then gold just sold off. So really, really tricky environment. Uh, been shorting CMA, CVNA, Dash and Coin. Um, looks pretty oversold here. I would watch for a counter trend rally back to the 21 moving average. Every time you get a two extended off that 21, as you see here, usually get snap back rally. So look, you get extended off the 21, snaps back. Extended off the 21, snaps back. Extended off the 21, snaps back. You're again extended off that 21. So just be careful. Um, what, use the 21 moving average, the EMA on the daily as your, your, your guidepost, right? Again, a little extended off that 21. So I wouldn't continue to short. I would just, you know, make sure you're, you're shorting the pullbacks to the 21, right? Again, extended off that 21. All right, did HD already? Any good squeeze candidates? Um, I haven't checked yet, but let's let's do a quick, let's do a quick 30 minute squeeze. Uh, let's go to the scanner. There's a lot, there's a lot setting up, but um, it's a lot to go through. But generally I run the scan every day. Some of these don't look really great. So I'm just going through them really quick. They're all in downtrends that, that could be interesting. American Airlines, I've been watching American Airlines for a little while. I do have an open trade plan on American Airlines as you could see there. So American Airlines, and all airlines in general look pretty decent. That looks pretty good. There you go. KH, KHC, there's one for you. Here, I'll come up with the trade plan real quick. Watch for a break over 43.24. You get a break over 43.24 and you could probably target 43.45 and then 43.90 to the upside. That's uh, crown, no, 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 no. All broken charts, all going down. We don't want any of those charts. That looks interesting. CALX. It's a little wild, but looks decent. That one looks pretty decent. There you go. CHRW. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I do, right? I'm just going through, I run scans, I go through charts, I see what, you know. Okay, so Trader Isaac, how can you briefly explain how you use the BBKC squeeze indicator? Does it trigger a buy on its own combined with other indicators? Great question. Okay, let's do one more scan. And let's go to daily squeeze. Okay, so here we go. Here's HD. So it's setting up with a squeeze, but look at momentum. 
right? It's still negative, but if momentum flips positive and your red dots are still setting up, then the squeeze is inact, right? And so here's what the squeeze is. I'm gonna turn everything off. And I'm gonna throw on the Keltner channels and the Bollinger Bands. So this is what happens. So your Keltner channels are in green, your Bollinger Bands are in blue. When the Bollinger Bands go inside the Keltner channels, the squeeze is on. And so here you see the squeeze. You see the blue lines within the Keltner channel. This is squeezing. So, you know, now that coupled with the setup, which is a falling wedge, which is generally a bullish reversal pattern. That's why I like this over 317. If this momentum starts to tick to the upside, right? Let's say you see like a positive and then a positive and then a positive and a positive. And then this starts to break out and starts to creep up to 317. And listen, you can take the trade here. You just, the trade is two there, but over here, the trade is much higher. And so I'd much rather take this idea than take this idea personally. But if you're like a day trader or a scalper, you could take that idea. So if you get this daily, right? And now it's starting to tick higher and higher and higher and you get into this breakout and then this breakout and then it fires and then RSI breaks over 50 and you get, you know, this move, then yeah, take the trade there. And now you might get, you know, a sustained six to eight day move higher. The other thing I look for, does it have lower time frame squeezes? So I might go to like, let's say a 65 minute chart. We'll wait for that to load. Or not, it's a little slow, there we go. All right, look, so you got a 65 minute squeeze setting up, right? There's that negative momentum going to positive momentum. So that looks interesting. Let's look at the 30 minute. So another one, right? Slingshot, right? So you're going negative momentum to positive momentum. So you've got a multi time frame squeeze setting up on HD with a daily chart that's showing a bullish formation. So it looks pretty bullish. I, you know, I would look for those lower time frame squeezes to fire. And that would be my indication of whether or not this has momentum to push this daily squeeze higher and then eventually for this to fire. So that's that's in essence what the squeeze is and how I use it. Um, I'm going to continue to go through questions, but Isaac, let me know if that answered your question. Happy to do a follow-up on it. Um, Akiva, yeah. So ATR is a trailing stop that I use. And I use a setting of 3.0. You can see it here. If you use TrendSpider, it's the ATR trailing stop with a, a multiplier of three. You can use two or 2.5. I prefer to use three. It gives me a little more wiggle room. Um, and you can see here, it actually, you know, not for nothing, but let's say you were to take Home Depot short. This also is great to use when it flips to the upside. Look at how it keeps you in short on this fall. So ATR can be used both ways. So Tim, I, um, I mentioned earlier, I have uh, a trading service. So um, we'll see what time is it? it's 815. So let me wrap, let me wrap it up here. Um, bear with me one second. And let me share my screen. One more time. So I have two, two basic plans, right? So I have my educational platform plan. Um, you can go to, um, let's see real quick. Let me get the chat up. You can go to pupcharts.com. That's going to bring you to the website. And then you go, you scroll down and, um, the, the plans are there, but basically this is like your basic plan. You're going to get access to my daily trade ideas. I put them out between eight, eight 30 every morning. It gives you about 20 plus hours of trading educational videos that are in a platform. I have my top 10 long-term conviction list. I give you all of my TrendSpider scans and watch lists. Really cool. If you are a TrendSpider user, you can import them and basically scan off of my watch lists. Um, get access to all my trading rules, my documents, chart requests, access to this office hours that I run every two weeks. Um, and then I do my weekend video where I'll go over my top 10 to 12 charts for the next day. Um, so that's $79 a quarter or $275 for the year. If you do the year, then you also get my 
uh, Fibonacci course, which is about 50% complete now, um, you get instant access to that. The real benefit, the, the, the best plan, honestly, from my point of view, is this one, the executive plan, because you get everything that I just said, but you also get four hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching. And there's a lot of my, um, a lot of my students that are in here uh, can tell you, you know, I, I work with you one-on-one, -on -one. we do 60 minute sessions, I'll record the session so you can always look back on them and I'll teach you anything you want to learn. Um, swing trading, day trading, you know, fib work, Elliott wave, whatever. Um, I could teach you that, or we could just, you could just pick my brain, ask me questions, or we could do trade reviews where I can review, you know, some of the trades that you've taken, tell you what I would have done differently, how you can approach the trade. Um, I, I found it very beneficial um, from the feedback that I've gotten with people that I work with directly. And so if you think about it, I charge hundred dollars an hour, that's $400, right? So basically you're paying $99 for the year for everything else. So I think that's honestly the best plan, but up to you. I know people like to start out with the $79 a quarter. I mean, what's $79? You'll make that on, on a half a trade. Um, and so, like I said, I put out one to two trade ideas a day. Lately, it's been a lot less because of what's going on in the market. But um, my job as a trader and you know, just as the, the leader in this group is to find the relative strength in the market. And, and that's what I do every single day. Um, lately there hasn't been so much relative strength, but, you know, while tech has been, you know, flipping and flopping, I've been finding some really, really good trades in oil and gas in materials and utilities in metals and mining. There are trades out there. There, there's always going to be trades out there. The market doesn't completely sell off all the time, every single day and have nothing going up. There's always something going up. So my, my plans in the morning will give you you know, a little bit of, you know, what's going on in the market, you know, what, what's uh, economic data is coming out, what, you know, what's going on futures pre-market. I'll give you an updated SPY and Q's chart. I'll give you updates on the trades, but then everything is also on the back end of the platform as well. So um, yeah, I mean, up to you. And like I said, anybody that's interested, feel free to, to use that link that I dropped. I would love to have you on board. Um, most people that come, they stay. Uh, it's, it's not that expensive, but I try and give you as much value as possible. Um, I'm doing this all day, every day. I mean, I've been trading full time for three years. I've been in and out of the markets for eight um, and I'm constantly, you know, learning new things. All right. You know, this is a market of um, like, this is a marathon. This is not a sprint. If you're really in this to trade, you have to come in with the expectation that you're going to, to be trading uh, for, for years to come. And you're going to use this as a learning experience. And, you know, I'm just kind of in the background along the way, you know, kind of perched on your shoulder, giving you advice, telling you, Hey, this is what I would do. I'm not saying follow exactly what I do, but, you know, use your judgment, you know, use the things that I teach you to mold it to your trading style. And, you know, I, I can promise you, you'll be a, a much better trader for it. And uh, if you put the time and, and, and energy into your charts and you really, you know, learn how to chart and you learn discipline and you figure out what your trading psychology is, you can find success in this market. But most people give up because they're trying to do it on their own. You know, I was the very same way. You know, it wasn't until I found a mentor to work with that, you know, it really, it, it changed, it changed the way I trade, you know? So um, yeah, would love to have you on board. Uh, I do appreciate everybody that's joined. Got a decent crowd uh, this evening. I know the markets haven't been that great. So I do appreciate you taking a little bit of uh, time out in your evening to be with me. So uh, thank you for my members that are here. Thank you for everybody who's new, who's given me a chance to, to speak and hear what I have to say. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can always reach me on Twitter. It's at the Pupple Wall Street. Just send me a DM, even if it's just to say hi, let me know what you think about the video. Would certainly appreciate that. And uh, keep in mind, um, I also publish a lot on Twitter and on YouTube and on Instagram. So on YouTube, you'll find a lot of videos. You'll find a lot of trade reviews. I will post this office hours next week. I don't post it right away because um, I want this to be more exclusive to my members. And um, yeah, I mean, I think that's really what I got tonight. So we ran a five minutes over. So um, thanks for staying with me. I appreciate you all being here. And uh, I hope to see you in the markets tomorrow. Take care, everyone.